If I come to it, good to see you again. Nice to see you. Um, thank you very much. Um, Edith Lederer from the Associated Press. Uh, two questions following up. Um, the Israelis have um, reportedly published, uh, proposed a two-month ceasefire during which the, all the hostages would be released and Palestinian prisoners would be released as well with a few other caveats. What is the UK's reaction to that proposal? And also, um, the UN has confirmed that it's received um, a letter from the Houthis ordering all um, UK and US nationals uh, working for the United Nations and NGOs to leave uh, the areas they control in northern Yemen. What is the UK's response to that? Well, first of all, on your first question, I think I have seen the press reporting on that, and I would go back to what the UK position is. When we saw that one pause that we did, we did see some goodwill prevail. We did see hostages being released. We did see aid entering. And that's why we now call for that immediate humanitarian pause, because it means hostages can get out. And I pay tribute to those working. The state of Qatar, I know, are involved, along with Egypt, together with Israel on that point. But it will also mean that we see the alleviation of the suffering of the ordinary civilians, Palestinians, particularly when you see 70% of the women and children that have been caught up and killed in that particular conflict. It's important we also make sure that element delivers. On the second point, I'll be quite frank with you. I think the United Nations, for all its challenges it faces in the world, I defy anyone to say, is there an organization that brings together, as it's doing again today, on this important issue, nations of the world? We may have our challenges, we may have our contrarian views, we may have differences, but the UN does an incredible job on the ground, and it's done that in Yemen. So I'd say a simple message for the Houthis is, let people who often put their own lives at risk to get on with the job to help alleviate suffering around the world. And if it's in Yemen or elsewhere, let people get on with the job. And on Gaza, that's why David Cameron, the Foreign Secretary, has also said, when we call for a sustainable ceasefire, that means not just trucks getting in, as we heard earlier. It's about ensuring those trucks are protected, the staff are protected, and to ensure they have the fuel and what's necessary in terms of logistics to allow them, as the UN does incredibly around the world, to do its job. Sir, yes, sir, thank please. You thank you, Lord Ahmed. It's Pamela Falk from CBS News. Good to see News. you again, Pamela. Yes, nice to see you. Uh, a quick follow-up on Yemen. There have been, as far as I'm counting, uh, eight missions of the US, UK and US um, attacking um, sites in Yemen. Is there any sense that the message is getting through? And if not, including the letter that Edie talked about, is there a sense that this will continue? Thank you. Well, I think on, as I said earlier, on the whole issue of Israel and Palestine, we need to look at who has what equity. And I think there are countries in the region, including the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, ha that have the ability and have demonstrated in recent months that peace with the Houthis is something that's a track that can be attained and achieved. The Houthis, as I said, can stop this today. And let's not forget, they themselves have launched over 26 attacks um, on commercial shipping, not on military shipping, on commercial shipping, but they have escalated that to include British ships. We want to see a de-escalation. We do not want to see that issue in any way being conflated with what we're dealing with from those shocking attacks on the 7th of October to where we are today in Gaza. One thing is very clear for every Israeli and Palestinian. Peace is the only course forward. Let's get focused on what needs to happen on the ground, and that's where the United Kingdom is working. Sir. One more question, sir. One more question, sir. Yeah. The IRGC, uh, Britain has, has called on nations to list the IRGC as a terror organization. Do you think it's appropriate for an IRGC card-carrying member to attend this meeting? Well, the thing is that 
I'm sure there's governance rule for meetings. We've been very clear about the IRGC and its destabilizing influence, and that's why we have taken sanctions across the board when it comes to IRGC members and, of course, the IRGC organization as a whole. Thank you so much. Thank you.